Welcome to this week's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I am joined today by Doug Hogan, CEO of Full Scope. Thanks for joining me, Doug. Great to be with you, Jesse. Thanks. Now, uh, glad to have you on the program. Uh, your name was brought up around four to five weeks ago, and I'm like, Full Scope, I've heard of that before, but uh, oh, didn't really know too much. Yeah, four to five weeks ago after we've been at it for a few years, but, but I'm, hey, you know better, better, better late than never, I guess. It's it's not you, it's me. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, I had the uh, the honor of taking a look at your system, man, and and like what Full Scope's doing, and was glad to have you on the program this month. So appreciate your time, Doug. Thank you, Jesse. So um, for those people who haven't met you, um, this is our first conversation as well. <laughs> um, do you mind just kind of introducing yourself, Doug, and your career to date? Yeah, Doug Hogan, CEO of Full Scope. Um, spent 10 years in the management consulting and technology space early in my career, um, moved to software, vertical software, which I think is a really cool place to be, um, which kind of leads us into this conversation and we'll get there. Um, took over full scope in 2020. Um, we did some interesting things. I'd really like to talk about the history of the scope there as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's us. We're based in San Antonio, Texas. We're a handful of employees that are that are sort of distributed across the country. Um, we got some offshore developers that help us with our API work, things like that. We can get into, but that's full scope in a nutshell. Um, we were born out of a bank in San Antonio called Trans Pecos Bank, and that was 2013, 2014 timeframe. The bank had recognized their need in their loan origination, you know, space in their lending space that they needed more automation. Um, you know, things getting lost, lack of visibility into pipeline, no digital applications, all the basic things that kind of didn't really exist back then. And so actually the founder of this, this company, Dub Sutherland, who I work with uh, closely, uh, was pretty, pretty excited about getting into building, you know, his own loan origination platform. And he looked at Salesforce as a way to do it. Um, and so 2013, you may recognize in banking, there was the launch of a company called Encino. Um, which came out of, you know, North Carolina. Um, but Encino obviously made head waves. Actually, Dub and I were together at Dreamforce in San Francisco that year. And we saw the Encino launch with Mark Benioff. And it was like, oh, we missed the boat, um, you know, that kind of thing. I was working in another business at the time, but um, but Dub doubled down. He kind of kind of continued the the path of of evolving the platform. And I think it was it was a little bit of a sleepy organization for several years. Um, and then eventually I came to a point where I was making a transition from my last business and, and Dub said, Hey, Doug, I really need a, a CEO of this company. Um, and I think it's the right time. And it turned out it was the right time because PPP was happening during COVID and PPP, you know, the SBA program, um, became a, a huge, a huge opportunity for us to test our platform in a massive scale. Um, if you recall, this was a time when. People needed loans, small businesses out there needed loans um, in order to survive, um, but they couldn't walk into a physical bank branch at the time. Uh, and so you had to have this concept of a digital application, which, which we had. And so we rolled that out to about 15 banks and credit unions nationally, um, and ultimately ended up processing over 14,000 PPP loans on the platform. Wow. It was a testament to our ability to scale um, underwrite in the platform, generate loan documents, run them through free signature, all that cool stuff and integrate with the SBA. So that was a big success for us. But then we kind of took a collective pause right there in 2021 as PPP2 was kind of going on. And we said, okay, what's the future of this organization? Really? And we looked at the banking space um, and we said, we can pursue banks. Um, but first, we learned a lot from, from PPP and getting thousands and thousands of users on the platform, getting feedback on the UI, all that stuff. So let's re-architect the platform. Let's build it as a Salesforce App Exchange product and kind of launch a new, a new business out of the App Exchange, which is what we did. And I think we launched it in 2021, late 2021. Um, Immediately it was, okay, let's go talk to banks. But what you find out really quickly when you're working in banking and nobody likes working in banking, um, you know, is, is that the sales cycles are extremely lengthy. And so for a young organization that really wants to grow, you've got to look at opportunities. Hey, where can that growth really happen in the timeframe that we want it to happen? And so 
we had a mix of folks on the team with a, a very with varied backgrounds, but some of them were in non-bank lending. And so we said, okay, let's look at this non-bank lending space and see what's there. Um, and equipment finance became a pretty good opportunity that we, we stumbled upon. Um, and we said, wait a second, we're a perfect fit for this. Our platform's a perfect fit. Um, and we started signing up clients um, and learning a ton from those early implementations. Early implementations are never the best, um, but they're the best, they're the best to learn from. Yeah. You know? Sure. Um, and so we we ended up going out and hiring some some folks. Um, one of our product leaders who you met, Mitch Curious, um, over from CIT Bank. And you know, he's done equipment finance operations. Um, and he's also worked on Salesforce. So it's like one of those unicorn type of folks that you're like, hey, let's partner together. Let's really envision what the future platform should look like. Um, and we aligned on not only, hey, like let's let's bring on some great equipment finance companies and make sure that we're making them super happy. Um, find them through organizations like NIFA, um, things like that that we've had a lot of success with. Um, but then just focus on delivering and creating great customer experiences. And that happens through speed, efficiency, um, being cost effective, all those things. Um, and so we started to grow that way. Meanwhile, focusing on a longer term strategy that I'll get to in a second, but I'll pause there. I know I just jumped a bunch on you, but that's kind of the, the history of full scope as we, as we have gotten up to where we are today. No, man, I appreciate that overview. And, you know, some of these things I've known a little bit about, but definitely a lot more, um, you know, to process. So, um, yeah, I mean, in Sino, um, big organization, you know, banking <laughs> front yeah. end kind of ties into it. Um, you know, there's another Salesforce player in equipment finance. So you guys are kind of the third. Do you mind yeah. just kind of describing kind of your approach, Doug, compared yeah. to those other well, options? Think, yeah. And I'd say compared to the other options, first of all, I mean, looking at, especially as you're a small business looking to grow, Salesforce is a really powerful horizontal, horizontal CRM platform that can go. Yeah. And they, they would say, don't call it CRM. We're way beyond that, right? And, and, and in some cases, I would agree. Um, but it's really important for even Salesforce to be able to grow to say, hey, we need good partners who, who understand the verticals like equipment finance. And, and, and can you verticalize our product in a way that makes it really easy to use and drive, drive adoption, you know, in a, in a segment like equipment finance. And so, yeah, I mean, a lot of smart vendors out there that have done that. Um, we think we've done some things a little bit differently. Um, one is just our our model. I mean, we do while we do have sort of customers that are in banking, we have customers that are in the factoring space. Um, we have customers that uh, what we call are like the land of the misfit toys, uh, which are sort of alternative lenders out there that sure. that may that may be the only type of company that does the type of thing they do in the country or in the world. Um, but th and those folks come to us because they say, hey, you've got a really nice out of the box platform. But what, you, what we also see is the ability to simply configure no code, low code platform, um, the APIs we know you can build, you know, those types of things. And so it, it positions pretty well for that. But even with that, we've got this kind of core product that's really robust. I mean, a full blown loan origination, you know, platform that does everything from, you know, digital application, underwriting, integrations to third party systems you know, document generation, kind of all that stuff we talked about. Um, we, we decided we could really build a push button deployable solution for, for the vertical, which is, hey, look, let's build an equipment finance specific product that works for both brokers and funding sources. Um, we can kind of talk about that a little bit. But sure. one, of the, one of the challenges that we saw and, and the feedback that we got from the market um, as, as we started talking to companies in the space was, yeah, implementations can be six months to question mark. Um, and as a matter of fact, it seems like we're still not done years later. Um, and the other thing, you know, we, we get these change orders or statements of work for, for things that, you know, we kind of think are great for the product, but, you know, the next thing we know, it's $30,000 and another six months to deliver this capability that we really need. And so we've kind of taken that, tried to flip it on its head a little bit at full scope, which is one, let's start with a push button deployable solution. And yeah, we'll have to do some initial setup um, that takes what we say between eight and 12 weeks, which is, hey, send us your applications, send us your, your credit policies and credit models, 
send us your processes that you have. If you have things documented, great. If not, we'll work with you on it. Um, send us your, your equipment finance agreements and other types of documents that we, we can get our hands on, and then we can wire data in the system to those things. But it's really just tailoring the system to your needs is what implementation looks like. We're not doing a ground up build. Um, and I think that's resonated a lot with you know clients, especially we've had some startups come onto our platform that are like, look, we need to be funding deals 60 days from now. Can, can you guys help us get there? And we'd be like, we got gotcha. you. Don't worry. We know how to do that. Um, and sure. here's how we're, here's how we're going to scope it. Here's how we're going to deliver it. And, you know, a CRM loan origination build, like anything else is sort of like, um, LAX airport, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's always, always under construction, but airplanes always have to be taking off and landing. Um, and so, to, to so, yeah, but, but, but what we, what we really didn't want to do to our customers is saying, yeah, your platform's going to have to evolve for you to scale over time. And we absolutely get that. What we don't think, what we don't believe is that you should have to pay for us to evolve our platform. So you come to us for, with a great idea or a great concept, um, and we just do it. Um, now you want to own the IP, that kind of thing. That's a different story, <laughs> but, but we just do it. We don't charge you. We don't do it. We don't do an S SOW. Um, we, we think it's just right. It's helping us advance our platform and make it better for our customer base. And that's just sort of the, the ethos that we have about it, which is, you know, I've been on the other side where I've been man, you know, managed vendors um, and businesses that I've ran and you never like being the guy who's like, Hey, that's my, that was my idea. And now these guys are going out and they're making millions and millions um, on, on the back of my, my thinking. Right. So that's something yes. that we've tried to solve for to make, you know, everybody running their business. They're the smartest people that, you know, that we work with. We, we, sure. we think we're, we think we're pretty bright, but the great ideas come directly from people who are doing. It. Sure. No, that's a, that's an interesting approach and definitely like refreshing to hear, um, you know, cause as someone who was in the software space for a little over 10 years, it's prioritization of resources is always kind of tricky when it comes to, I mean, you mentioned like some alternative lenders, I think even any lenders, if they're doing a paper, everyone in this industry does that little thing that makes them more unique. So they're going to need some software or <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it. The way people pastorize spreadsheets oh, I know. in this yeah. industry, you're just kind of like, how many pivot tables can you possibly have in, in one? The answer is usually a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> so it's how do you, um, you know, as you guys continue to grow, it's like how do we, how do you keep that <laughs> methodology alive? <laughs> right, right. No, you, you've got to, you've got to make sure that you're building platforms. And this is how, you know, we've kind of gone out, we see a big gap for brokers, um, where, where brokers need, like, you know, sort of loan origin light um, capabilities. Um, but there's not really a great, a great uh, product out there, I think, for that. But I think we've bent our product in a way that we can roll out sort of the basic capabilities for them. And a lot of times what we see with brokers are, hey, they're starting out, they're a one or two person shop, um, but they aspire to be a funding source. And so what we say to them is, you know, yeah, you can go to some of these other, you know, lighter weight CRM platforms out there and you can kind of try to do a weird funky science project on your own to kind of pull together some different technology and, uh, and, and run it that way for a while. But eventually that's going to break if you really do achieve the success that that you can. So we say, why don't you plan for your success now um, from the beginning? You wouldn't be doing this if you didn't think that you could do it. Um, so get a good platform in place at the right price for you. And when you need to be able to fund deals and do some of the things that are a little bit more intensive on the platform, um, just let us know and we can expand it for you. So. Sure. Sure. So from a, I guess, a project methodology perspective, the whole push button, um, you know, kind of, kind of walk me through that, Doug, if, if you, if you, if you don't mind, because that is one of the, the biggest challenges that I kind of faced in my career in software. It's, we all have this, you know, grandiose plan where it's like, Hey, look, this is going to take nine months. It's going to take 12 months. But as soon as you start adding more, it's like anything yeah. else, more time, more money, more frustration. Yeah. Um, what have you seen so far kind of with that push button approach and what do you do when that client says I want it out of the box and you know what reality is they want it out of the box but 
<laughs> you know, but they're gonna want they're, they're gonna want changes, and th- and that's okay. That's actually that that's where we want to be going forward. Is hey, you know, you could start with that. I mean, it's got specific applications, specific you know third party portals for vendors, referral sources, salespeople, things like that. We've configured it a certain way, but and it's gonna deploy that way. I mean, obviously, we're gonna. We're going to white label it for you um, so that you get your brand on there. We're going to white label your portals for you so that your referral sources, you know, can be branded as well. All those things, obviously those aren't push button things, but those are things that you can do in the, in very, very little time with very little effort. And so it's just kind of the hard part, which is getting the platform out there with the flows in place um, and, and, and getting you know, just getting sort of an end-to-end process that that exists. I think that's really the strength and the value. And you know, when 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 we turn it on, we hand over the keys. Um, customers are usually pretty darn impressed. And say, hey, this is what I saw in the demo. I'm really excited that this is actually what I'm what I'm logging into now. And uh, you guys were were serious about that. Well, unfortunately, we have you know, years worth of struggling projects or implementations with other softwares that you're combating against um so people can be a little skeptical and you don't really blame them software look, software <laughs> software look, the, 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 i i don't yeah i mean people have been selling vapor for years they're they're better they're more talented salespeople than, than i am um and so i i, I lack that talent and so yeah. I, I would I, i'm more of a i'd rather just show you and have you reach your own conclusions um and i don't like I just don't believe in selling anything that doesn't exist. Um, now yeah. we'll, we'll talk about capability. Can we integrate to this third-party system that we've never integrated before? Well, let me just check. Do they have an open API? Do they have their API available? Can we look at their spec? I mean, if they have a modern system, we can connect to them, and it'll take three to five weeks, and and sometimes a little longer depending on their responsiveness as a vendor. Uh, but the things sure. that are within our control, we feel pretty comfortable. With. Sure, and then. Um... Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting thing because one of the challenges I see with like the Salesforce in general is just the amount of the amount of things that that system can do. Yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't need to do that much. <laughs> that, so that that's a great point, Jesse. And I think uh, and actually so walking into this business I, and I don't I don't want my Salesforce account team to hear me say this, but I was not a fan of Salesforce. I just thought it was too busy. It too, required too many clicks to get anywhere to do anything. I had a hard time navigating it in my past. Um, I, I'm a changed person, I think, at this point. I mean, it's now now it changed a little bit because I think of what we've done, which is we try to quiet the noise in the platform as much as possible and just build sort of the for the user the capabilities that they need and don't have all that superfluous stuff sort of clouding clouding your UI. It just um it just gets in the way, and I think that's resonated really well. You know, just leveraging simple things like tabs, um, you know, containing information, critical information, but like push all the other capability. If it doesn't need to be used for the process, then let's get rid of it or hide it, um, and just focus on what's really what's really critical to the business. Yeah, and our team saw that immediately in that in that demo. We we're like, wow, okay, this is crisp. It's clean. It's not overwhelming. It's not distracting. It's Clear and concise. <laughs> it's it still looks like Salesforce, which still looks yeah, like kind yeah. of like a 2009 application, and th- th- that's a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> but I mean, we're look we're looking at a lot of different tools out there that can help you change that whole look and feel too, but still have the power of Salesforce behind it. So I think that's 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 something that I see. I think you'll see us and other similar vendors kind of adopting over time. So stepping into the equipment finance industry, 1.8 trillion. You have some bigger software players in the space. Uh, full scope's the front end, so you're not really a threat at this point in time to the back end. Yep. I'm sure that's a conversation for another day as your company evolves, maybe. Who knows? You never know. But um, how how is that approach, Doug, to the market? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's interesting. That's kind of the partnership that we've had with, with NIFA from the beginning. Um, we found that most uh, most of the funding sources and most of the folks associated with NEFA are like kind of the right size, right profile, prospective client for us. Um, yeah. I, I, we don't want to tackle the thousand person businesses right now. Um, that just comes with with a lot of noise. 
we think we can be really cost effective at what we do and work with other SMBs out there that have kind of similar growth aspirations. Um, and frankly, they're more fun to work with. Um, and I think, um, you know, we collaborate, we partner with them. Um, and it's it's usually a, a really good working relationship. And I've not always had that experience working as a software vendor with with clients um, in the past. And so it, it's it's been a lot of fun. And I know our teams have fun. I think one of our clients sent uh, one of our employees a, a Christmas present this year, which just baffled me. I'm like, wait, when does this ever happen? That a and typically it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I was like, I was like, wait. They, they asked me for his address, and I was like, are you kidding me? You're going to send your software vendor a, a gift? So, I mean, those kind of things. They, you know, they mean they mean a lot to us, and uh, and sure. I think it 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 just kind of demonstrates, I think, the commitment that we've made to our customer. We're not here to nickel and dime you. Um, I think people see that we're a good fit. We're not over marketed. We're not oversold. Um, you know, we, that's not where we spend our time. Um, you know, ideally word of mouth sales is like where we'd like to be, um, you know, so that we're not doing as much email marketing. We're not doing as much, you know, LinkedIn advertising and all those types of things. Cause you're meeting, you're having cold customer calls then. And, you know, every business like us or pretty much every business in general love a warm introduction where it's, Hey, Full scope was really great for me. You guys should check them out. And that's that's where we want to play. Perfect. And then I guess just general thoughts on the equipment finance industry. Um, you know, coming focusing on banks previously, um, similar but a lot different. <laughs> I think so, but the, the themes are all very similar. Um, and I, I mean, it's new, it's nuanced, obviously, right? And you have to understand that. But I mean, I think, you know, th things like where are you going to leverage AI? Where do you want to incorporate that into your process? These are conversations that everybody's having. Some are doing it faster than others. Um, you know, Salesforce has AI sort of um, native capabilities that we can leverage. Um, so there's conversations around that. There's embedded finance and banking as a service, which are our buzz terms going all over the place. And anybody who's going on Amazon and making a purchase and they see the buy now, pay later or financing options. I mean, th I think there's going to be a push obviously to meet the customers where they are. Um, and why shouldn't, why shouldn't equipment finance companies be embedded directly into those sort of vendor experiences? Um, sure. I think, I think that's something that we all need to be prepared to do. And I know you're seeing folks kind of move in that direction. It's not that hard either. Don't don't let them tell you otherwise. Um, but I but I think that's it. All comes down to speed at the end of the day, right? This is all. How can we get efficiency? How can we do efficiency at scale so that we can do more business, but do it the right way consistently? Um, and so whether that's hey, look, I need a I need a strong partner that can iterate the platform with me and for me along the way. Um, and not feel like I'm getting nickel and dimed and, you know, or overcharged just to build their platform. Um, and, you know, as new technologies come out that really can benefit us, whether it's a KYC, KYB kind of tool um, or any other type of third party data source, we need to be able to leverage those quickly. So you've got to be able to do integrations fast. And so I, I think that's kind of, that'll never change. That'll never change. That's always going to be the focus. Well, and then in, in equipment finance, as I mentioned, the magical spreadsheet earlier, <laughs> yeah. um, especially right. tackling like the broker side, what is your kind of biggest challenge that you've gone up against with some of these organizations that are well over 20 years old and they're almost allergic to technology for lack of better? <laughs> I, I, I think I think the biggest challenge, and this is something that we always try to call out, is if you've really been in operation for a long time, um, and you're on some old platform or you're on no platform, um, you always want your historical data into the platform. And those data migrations, the data migrations are a beast. Now, we have the ability to data load and do things pretty rapidly. We can move, upload files and things like that pretty rapidly. But the problem with the problem with data migrations is not about like the tools that we have that can do it very efficiently. It's no offense, everybody, but it's the quality of your data. <laughs> Um, and how do we port that over <laughs> into our system? And you know, and so you end up having a lot of those initial conversations that nobody likes, which is, hey, you said you were going to move my data in here, but this is all this all looks like crap. And it's like, well, that's the data. So <laughs> <laughs> that's always a tricky situation, right? It's like, uh, what do you I mean by that? No, you, you you did it wrong. No, yeah, your data yeah. is not good. Yes, my data is fine. It's been working forever. Oh, God. Yeah, okay. yeah, 
yeah, I think I think that's right. So you know, try to be nice about it, but usually sure. people pe people get it. But you know, and and I think yeah. from from our perspective now, just even seeing that happen a couple of times, it's just providing a realistic preview of that up front um, to to your customers, so they know. You you never want to tell anything, say anything in the sales process like, oh yeah, we do that all the time. It's really easy, and then it, you know the rubber hits the road, and it's not that at all. <laughs> then, then you lose credibility. As, you, as, as I get into some consultants, they're like, well, what's the best way for us to move systems? I'm like, you're not going to like the answer. You're not going to like the run off and start over again. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we really do, Jesse. Jesse, we try to try to put the message out there, which is like, you know, maybe you just, if you have an old platform or you know, why don't you drop it down to one user license or something and just keep access to that legacy platform at a low cost. Um, don't worry about migrating it all the way, everything over. I mean, just start fresh in the new platform, and that that's yeah. a that's a workable strategy. Now, it doesn't work for everybody, but, uh, no. but, no. but it could. <laughs> Do people just what? I'm like, never mind. It's, yeah, exactly. Never, never, never mind. You asked the question, I gave you the right answer, <laughs> not the answer that you wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's not always that way. So. Um, so you've been with the organization for around four years. Four um, years. Uh, how many? How many employees? How many clients are you four, guys at? Four years four, in. Five full-time employees. Um, yeah. We got two offshore developers, and then we leveraged yeah. some fra fractional resources and like, you know, um, kind of like CFO fractional, and um, you know, do, doing things efficiently um, is, is our goal. We want to eat our own dog food. We tell you that we can be efficient, so we're going to be efficient on our. Um, sure. And so, so yeah, that's what the business looks like today. Um, for for clients, we've got forty plus clients on the platform, um, which I think is a is a nice a nice growth rate for us. I think we'd sure. love to be growing more, um, and and I think we can take on more. We'd obviously probably staff up as as we do that. Um, but sure. but our at our current current growth rate, you know, I think um, we're in a great. I, we like being sort of a, a tight, low footprint organization. Um, you know, it's a distributed team, but we're close. Um, we get along, we're aligned in terms of uh, our mindset and sort of where we want to go as a business. And so that's that's a nice thing to have. Well, I'll make sure I put a little ticker in my calendar to follow up with you and yeah, maybe 12 months and see yeah. where things yeah. are at. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, look, you, scaling is hard, right? It, 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 it's hard. Um, I think, you know, the, the market's been in such a place that it's, it's, you know, everybody would acknowledge that it's weird. Um, yes, people need platforms. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, deals are happening, but you know, especially when you have an election coming up and you've got other things. A lot of times, business just just say, "Yeah, we know we really need to do that, but let's just wait and see. Let's just try to understand a little bit more about what's going to happen in November. What's going to happen, you know, with the economy and all these things." And so, those are things that are realities that you know we can't. You know, we can try to shove software down people's throats, but your bottom line is they buy when they want to buy. So. Same page, man. <laughs> same, same, exact, same exact page. Um, you know, where, where things will get interesting is as you continue to grow, it's that kind of the cross of, okay, now it's time to make this investment. Because one of the challenges I've seen with software companies or just organizations in general, it's like, okay, we need to deploy more human capital here to yeah. keep up with this. <laughs> and that yeah. That's the that's the thing, but you know, if if you if you get to a point with your platforms where you really are confident in your ability to push button deploy, all of a sudden that's a bit of a game changer, right? Um, sure. And, it's, and so it's it's how do we do this in a repeatable way where we can consistently deliver a great experience and also not have to require, you know, and we do have rock stars on the team, but you don't want to require every lift to be like a heroic accomplishment. If it requires a heroic accomplishment, <laughs> then then it's too hard. Right. right. It, it should just be us doing our jobs and it should be it should be something that we can do uh, within reason, right? So it's interesting perspective, but definitely spot on. <laughs> um, so Doug, I ask everyone that I have on the program to give me a little fun fact about themselves. So sure. um, you know, what makes you tick outside of software? Well, I don't know how fun this is. My, my wife and I, we have seven children, um, which, seven? Is a, which is a fairly large family uh, okay. this, this day and age. So we've got um, twin daughters that are 14. We've got another daughter that's 12. 
we have a nine-year-old son, a seven-year-old daughter, and then we were blessed during COVID with additional set of twins, a boy and a girl, who are now three. And so the the practice logistics schedule, you know, gets a little bit tight. And and so yeah. I'm spending all my, you know, I, I work all day and then it's picking up from baseball, dropping off at basketball. I coach a basketball team with my son. You know, the, right now at that stage, at this stage in life, I mean, it's, it's a lot, but it's super fun. Um, we have a good time with it. Unfortunately, <laughs> like we have to drive a sprinter van around because that's the only vehicle that we could fit into. Um, hey, you know, it is and, uh, it is what it is. You, you didn't do a minivan. You did the Sprinter van, which is the, which is fine. Minivan, which is yeah, fine. minivan is good for seven or eight. If you need that <laughs> ninth, ninth in there. I, I, so I'll, I'll be at a gas station, and people walk up to me when I'm at the gas station, and they're like, "Oh man, that's a great van. What's your configuration in there? Do you have like a bed?" And and I open up the door. I'm like, "Well, it's, a, it's just twelve seats. Sorry to disappoint you." <laughs> Oh man, I can only imagine the, your groceries on a weekly basis for seven souls, yeah, especially as they get into their teenage years. <laughs> you, you get economies of scale on that kind of stuff for the most part, but there's certain things that you don't. You know, I just think of every time I go to Costco, like when I had when my son was born. It's like, come on, really? Yeah. And that now it's like you go and you're just like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're all they're all still young. I know. And I can't wait till we have those teenagers that are really housing housing food, and then that's going to be pretty overwhelming, I'm sure. But hey, as long as we keep growing full scope, everything's going to be fine. Hey, hey, that's a good balance. Good for you, man. Seven. That's uh, you know, I have, I have two, and it's kind of like where's between the amount of I travel, and work in the different things that I do. It's like I barely get time, so. I bless you it, on that one, man. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. And and two's wonderful as well. I mean, yeah, but I l- love being around kids, and, and it's always, it's fun. Keeps you young, right? Um, sure, sure. Um, I guess my closing question to you, Doug, is why should someone want to do business with Doug Hogan and Full Scope? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, aside from all the buzzwords like integrity and things like that, which we absolutely stand by, and I think we're. I think we've become a very easy to work with company. We try to make things very transparent, um, but also consistent delivery. Um, I think we're fun to work with. You know, a lot of times if you're doing a technology implementation, um, it just makes it easier if you're, if you don't dread going to the meeting, um, if you don't dread going to the updates and things like that. Um, sure. But also I, I think we've got, I think we've got a handle on some really great technology, Jesse. Um, and I think um, I think that's being proven out in the market. We're getting the feedback um, that we're doing things differently, um, as we as we talked about. And I think um, you know if, if 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 you're at that, you know, you're a small mid mid sized business, but you want to grow, um, Full Scope could be a perfect partner in helping you figure out how you can achieve that scale. Perfect, Doug. Thank you very much, man. I'm looking forward to seeing the journey of Full Scope. Uh, it was a pleasure speaking with you today for the first time. Look forward to seeing you when this airs in Huntington Beach for yeah. uh, for NEPA's conference. Can't wait. We'll have a good time. Thanks for the time, Jesse. I appreciate being with you. Absolutely. Take care.